Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening and welcome at our program, Let's Talk Revival. Right, that's what we do on this program, Talking Revival. And uh, today we have a revivalist amongst us, all the way from Perth, Australia, Pastor Robert Clancy. And my privilege and honor to uh, welcome him today as our guest in the studio. Pastor Robert, welcome. Pastor Herod, it is a pleasure to be here and welcome to all the viewers. Uh, I am Pastor Robert Clancy, all the way from Perth, Western Australia. Well, so uh, we had a wonderful time when it comes to, uh, you know, watching you minister and, and seeing people's lives being transformed. But uh, just for the sake of the listeners, um, I met Pastor Robert when, um, through somebody in our, in our church and uh, who sent me a video link and I had it, looked at it and I said, you know what? Where our church is at the moment is that we have a heart for revival. We are crying for revival. And what the last thing that we want now is any distraction, any diverting to different courses. And uh, I looked at this video, but within the first three minutes into this video, I just felt that this man was talking my language or I was talking his language or we were talking each other's language. And then I heard that you were coming to South Africa. Was this uh, trip planned long ago? Uh, no, actually, it was uh, after a time of prayer on the prayer mountain, I think, which was one of the same videos that you had yeah. watched. Um, the Lord spoke to me and said that, uh, get ready, you're about to travel. So I looked at the different means of traveling and the only place that didn't have any mandates was South Africa. <laughs> so um, so that's it, it started off there with a conversation to uh, Pastor Cabello, who I work with closely here in South Africa, said, have you got any time off? I said, the Lord is telling me I must be there in August. Mm. And, uh, and from there, uh, one door opened and then I announced that I was coming. I didn't know exactly where I was going to go, where I was going to minister or who I would meet. And lo and behold, Sister Emmy, who mm. lives in Cape Town, which is one of your members, mm. um, you know, uh, came to you and, and shared with you, and now we're here today. Well, that's, I, I really believe this was a divine appointment because when, when we met, you made the statement saying it's like we're knowing each other for years, and that's exactly the, the mutual feeling that I had. But tell us a bit about yourself. Where did your heart for revival start? Well, my heart for revival started when I was first saved. Now, let mm. me tell you about that story because... No one came to minister to me. Mm. No one came to hand a gospel tract to me. But I had a praying mother. Mm. Now, my mother was a staunch Catholic, but she was a charismatic Catholic. Mm. And she would pray for me for many years. And, and I had obviously been in a time of um, great rebellion, uh, very much. And I was involved in bikey gangs within Perth, Australia. And I had been involved in some of the initiation things that were, I just realized that this wasn't for me, this lifestyle wasn't for me. And I went through a bit of a turmoil and my mother gave me this prayer. And on the back of this prayer card was the Father's Prayer. And it said at the bottom, it said, if you say this prayer with such a deep heart and sorrow, something is gonna change in your life. So. Um, obviously coming from that Catholic background, not a practicing Catholic, I prayed that prayer earnestly one particular night. Mm. And then in that night, I had a visitation because all of a sudden I started to cry. I wasn't a person that had cried before, but all of a sudden I started to cry for the mm. first time. And I had the appearance of Jesus come before me. I saw uh, his feet. I couldn't look up. I saw his feet. And from there, it started the process of a deliverance that took place in my life from all the hurt, from all the pain, from all the different types of abuse that I had been through as a young person. And then it set me on a course. It set me on a course of seeking God. And it was there that I was introduced to the Bible. And from the Bible, I understood what it was to be born again. But I, uh, and, and from there, I had these encounters with God and he showed me like on a movie clip, as you can imagine watching a movie, but all of a sudden the movie clip changed and I saw different scenarios, different scenes of me being 
talking in front of lots of people. Now, mm. coming from my background and coming from the only religious background I knew, which was Catholicism, I couldn't understand this. I thought maybe I was going to be called to be an ambassador for Australia, mm. not realizing the scripture says that we are to be mm. ambassadors sure. for Christ. So I saw a thatched house, a thatched hut, and you know, I, I realized there was some connection to Africa. So the course started, uh, the Lord had sent me to, uh, to a few nations um, doing missionary work, but it wasn't until like 10 years later um, that the thatched hut kept on coming back to me. Mm. And, you know, I was always earnestly seeking God uh, in my life. And then I met my wife, who is my wife now, and we have six lovely children. Um, but I told her before we got married, because we were both doing missionary work in her country, which was a country called East Timor. There was a lot of conflict there uh, that you may have seen on the mm. news, or if mm. not, for some of the viewers may, may understand the conflict that took place there. But they were run by the United Nations for many years before they mm. became a new nation again. Mm. Um, so I was there. Um, and I said to her, look, if you're going to marry me, don't expect a white picket fence. Mm. So obviously she fell in love with me and she forgot about it because the Lord said, no, I'm not sending you to Africa now. I want to teach you to be a husband, a father and a provider. And I couldn't understand it then because I was so zealous for God. I was a young man. I was full of energy. I thought I could save the world. I could preach to, mm -hmm. and, and I would preach on corners. I would preach on streets. I would preach in schools. I would preach everywhere I could when I was back home. And then by the grace of God, I got into employment. I became a, um, uh, a business area manager that uh, was, you know, and I worked for more than several companies that made me travel around Australia. We're on good income, started to get a house, a mortgage, and even an investment mm. property, and two cars with a pool, and had all the lovely things. And all of a sudden, um, at that point, and God, at that stage, I'd went through Bible college also while I was working, and also I was ordained as a pastor. But then God visited me, and he said, I want you to sell everything that you have mm. and come and follow me. Wow. And Pastor, I couldn't, I couldn't tell mm. even other pastors around me this because none of them had done this. Yeah. It was something God was calling me to do. So um, I believe I went to my wife and she thought I was crazy. She, mm. she, for, she forgot what I said to her at the mm. beginning about the white picket fence and so forth. And it, it took a period of time. So I let it rest. I sat with the Lord. And it took more than several months. And then all of a sudden, God came and spoke to her in dreams and visions, as well as my children. And they saw me traveling around the world. So uh, when she came and presented that, that's when God opened the door for me to, uh, to do that. So we, we, we prepared our house for market. We sold it. We sold our investment property. We got out of debt or anything, mm. whatever was left over. I used for the ministry and also I had one year's rent for my uh, wife to take care of her mm. and I took off to Africa. All by yourself? All by myself. Mm. And uh, I landed in uh, East Africa and uh, someone came who I made one contact with. He came to get me from the airport. Uh, he didn't have a vehicle. <laughs> it was wow. a very poor evangelist, you know, that was struggling to get by. So we had to carry my luggage, which was full of gospel tracks. It was very heavy. And we had to drag it all the way. So it was like five or six kilometers wow. outside of the airport area because no taxis or what you call taxis here, they call matatos in Kenya, couldn't mm. come within mm. the. So we went there. And as soon as I got on that matato, um, I asked the person with me, I said, is it, is it custom for you to ask to minister on the matatos? And they said, well, we're going to ask. And we asked. And because I was a foreigner, they said, well, we want to hear what he has to say. Mm. And I started to minister the gospel on the Matatu. And then we went from there to the city. And I said, the Lord wants me to go into the middle of the city and start to minister the gospel. So I did. And then I was told, oh, you, you need to get a permit for this. <coughs> otherwise, 
those police in that khaki uniform with the batons, they will come and lock you up. So we went to the, uh, to the city council. I waited there for more than several hours and nobody was coming to, to see our request. Mm. They, they actually probably thought that, who is this crazy person asking for such a request? So mm. the spirit of the Lord said, okay, just get up and get out there and start preaching. I said to the person, I said, it's better me be in prison so I can preach the gospel than to waste time here wow. any longer. And that's, that's how it started. And we went to prisons, we went to the streets, we went to the markets, the bus stations, even before the church invitations mm. came. Um, but when it comes to revival, let me tell you, when I was traveling across Australia with my wife, the Lord, as I was driving, it's a, it's, it's a fair distance to drive across mm. Australia, the Lord said to me, he said, I want to use you as a conduit. I want mm. to use you as like a, like a pipe. Mm. He says, that pipe, no one sees the pipe in your house. In actual fact, when you go to turn the tap on, all they see is yeah. the tap and the water that comes yeah. out. He says, I want you to be that pipe that connects people to Jesus, which is mm. the tap, and the water is the Holy Spirit. Mm. Mm. And he says, in, in the time to come, there will be a great revival that God is going to stir, mm. not only within the nation of Australia, mm. but in the nations of the earth. Now, when I was in Kenya on that first visit, the Lord came to me and showed me fire that was starting all throughout Africa. And it started, it, it, to me, it just started from one tip and it was just going all the way to the, you know, it was just like, like this. And the interesting thing about South Africa was that when I visited South Africa, I always had a yearning to come to South Africa. I would transit through um, Johannesburg, you know, mm. Otama Airport, but I was never come out. Mm. But my encounters with coming through, I may have mentioned this on Sunday, I was going through the metal detector as you mm. come off from your connecting flight, yeah. you go through transit and you still got to go and put your stuff through mm. the thing. As I was walking through, the presence of the Lord started to come down. And I said, praise the living God to, the, to those people that were working there. And all of a sudden, they started to worship God. We just started to worship God. And those people there would even start to prophesy things that I don't wow. believe that they understood what they wow. was. But I believe that as it was a declaration there, that revival was coming mm. to South Africa. Mm. And as the doors opened to come to South Africa on another trip, uh, the Lord had visited me in the first night and had shown me that Nelson Mandela was about to die and that when he died, there would be certain key figures that would try to stir the pot for racial uh, hatred and mm. bloodshed within this nation. But it said, despite of that, God was going to mu move mm. and he was going to start in all the different communities. Because you know how there's been that, unfortunately, mm. because of creatures of habit and, and whatever is going on, the enemy mm. is, tries to keep us segregated. Mm. So I was first with um, uh, an Afrikaans couple. Mm. And then the Lord said to me, I said, oh, the Lord is now sending me to the township. Mm. And they said, oh, pastor, it's not safe to go to the township. And I said, oh, no, my heart is for those people. I said, my heart is for you also, but he wants me to start mm. in the township. Mm. So they dropped me off in the township and I managed to get one contact for uh, one person who then uh, got me into contact with Pastor Cabello, who's I've been working with here. And we just started from township to township, from house to house, handing out gospel tracts, preaching on the streets, mm. and then doors would open and I would stay in the townships um, for up to a month at a time, uh, depending on where else I was traveling. But uh, the heart for revival has been such a desire, but it comes from the love of God mm. that you have for people. Mm. So as I can see from Pastor um, Harrod, you have... Um, a love for the people. And mm. that's why when I went to your church, I saw so many 
different nationalities, mm. so many different speaking languages. Mm. And that is what we need in this hour. We need that fire of revival, mm. that fire of his love in our hearts to not only want to see souls saved, but want to see people come together, mm. encounter God. Mm. And I always remember that I'm just that conduit. No one, no, no one wants to see Pastor Robert because let me tell you, there's nothing good mm. about Pastor Robert. I'm just a wretched mm. person that is saved by grace. Mm. And, you know, the Lord showed me a vision some time ago of a spiritual dump. And in that spiritual dump, there was a cross that was illuminated and there were different people that would raise from that dump. And as the light, the glorious light from the cross illuminated, they would be cleansed and then their clothes would turn to white. But God never took away their scars. Mm. He never took away the tattoos mm. that they had from mm. their previous life as a reminder to remind us where we have come from mm. so that when God starts to move, we will know that it was because of the cross, mm. that old rugged cross that came to save us. Hallelujah. Wow. wow. We have five minutes left to, to chat and uh, I think uh, we will be back for next week as well. Uh, just to continue this conversation, because I really feel that uh, I want you maybe to also share a bit with our viewers, um, you know, from your heart. Um, but the road of revival is many churches speak about revival, but um, they don't fully understand the price you have to pay for revival. Because um, revival is self-denial. It's, it's turning away from yourself and focusing on God. Mm. When you travel around, what do you see the state of the churches in general across the world where you've moved? Well, I, I've always, I think I always desire to go to those very remote rural mm. places because I tend to, especially in Africa or in Asia or in India, the people come for long distance. Mm. Like I was in Zimbabwe and some old man came to me and says, I have walked for 20 kilometers. I could sure. not fathom an old man walking mm. 20 kilometers mm. to come and hear the word of God. Mm. Or when I see in the early days of China, how they would come and the church, the underground mm. church would come and they did not have a Bible. So if a foreigner mm. came with a Bible, they would divide the Bible up into yeah. different series. Yeah. They would share it. They would memorize the word of mm. God and that they would hunger for it. Mm. So as I go around to the cities, unfortunately, um, unfortunately, we see a lot today in, in some churches, we see that the people do not have that same hunger mm. for the word. They do not have that same hunger to encounter God. Mm. They want God uh, based on a you know quick service. Mm. Uh, a, you know, I just want God to provide for my needs, quick or touch, blessings, yeah. mm. but 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 lack the hunger for God Himself. Mm. Mm. Okay, Pastor Robert, our time has, has basically run out. Um, we're going to continue our conversation um, uh, for next week, and uh, we're going to continue on this, and I want you to minister to people, um, you know, what is on your heart. But you just remind me of a story that when I went to Russia, uh, we went uh, traveling from church, and an old lady was uh, walking on the side of the road and the mm. snow was quite thick and there was about minus 15 degrees outside. Mm. And um, this poor lady in a jacket, she was walking and you could see not walking very easily. Also 10 kilometers that she's got to walk. And uh, I, the pastor was telling us, saying mm. that this lady, she walks to church 10 kilometers. She leaves very early and then she comes to church. Um, and I said, can't we stop? Can't we just pick up? Mm. pick her up and just drop her off you know we'll move up and she can sit we'll make space for her and he says no she will never get in I said please just stop let me speak mm. to her so uh, we stopped and we spoke to her and I said please um, can't you just get in you, you, you're old you can't walk so far and she made an interesting statement she said pastor these legs have been walking for many, many years. Mm. They're not used to sitting in, back of, in the back of a car. Mm. If I have to put these legs in the back of this car, mm. next Sunday they're going to tell me they want a car and they don't want to walk anymore. Aye. 
And that struck me so hard mm. that I realized we take everything for granted. And this is what I see what revival is all about. Mm. It's when people start walking the distances, not worrying about the weather, worrying about the time that's so hungry for God. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to continue with this conversation next week. Same place, same time. Don't miss it. Tell all your friends that they know that because we are stirring up the gifts of God that is within us and in your life. And that we pray that we will see revival coming to this nation. God bless you and all the grace and peace of God be upon you. Till next time. Goodbye. Amen.